Welcome to worship today. It is the third Sunday after Pentecost. Also today we celebrate with Emily Contini as she is uh, celebrating her first communion. And so we welcome the, uh, the Contini family here to worship. Great to have you here for Emily on her day. We also are welcoming new members uh, at the end of the service. And we always rejoice uh, as new uh, people come into our congregation. The gospel today is uh, Jesus setting his face to Jerusalem, and he comes into contact with Samaritans. And we'll talk about uh, those kind of contacts that we all have from time to time, where there is a bit of tension and a bit of hostility. And how do we show up as, as Jesus people in those situations? That's what we're going to focus on this morning. But first, we begin with our confession and forgiveness. I would invite the congregation to please rise. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not followed your path, but have chosen our own way. Instead of putting others before ourselves, we long to take the best seats at the table. When met by those in need, we have too often passed by on the other side. Set us again on the path of life, save us from ourselves, and free us to love our neighbors. Amen. Hear the good news. God does not deal with us according to our sins, but delights in granting pardon and mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are free to love as God loves. Amen. Amen.
grace that is Christ's gift to us, the love of God, and the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace be with you all. And also with you. Sovereign God, ruler of all hearts, you call us to obey you, and you favor us with true freedom. Keep us faithful to the ways of your Son, that leaving behind all that hinders us, we may steadfastly follow your paths. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Lord, bless the reading of your word. Make it come alive in our midst. Amen. Amen. The first reading is taken from the second chapter of 2 Kings. Now when the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven by a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here. For the Lord has sent me as far as Bethel. But Elisha said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. But he said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. Fifty men of the company of prophets also went and stood at some distance from them, as they both were standing by the Jordan. Then Elijah took his mantle and rolled it up and struck the water. The water was parted to one side and to the other until the two of them crossed on dry land. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me what I may do for you before I am taken from you. Elisha said, Please let me inherit a double share of your spirit. He responded, You have asked a hard thing. Yet if you see me as I am being taken from you, it will be granted you. If not, it will not. As they continued walking and talking, a chariot of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them, and Elijah ascended in a whirlwind into heaven. Elisha kept watching and crying out, Father, Father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. But when he could no longer see him, he grasped his own clothes and tore them in two pieces. He picked up the mantle of Elijah that had fallen from him and went back and stood on the bank of the Jordan. He took the mantle of Elijah that had fallen from him and struck the water, saying, Where is the Lord, the God of Elijah? When he had struck the water, the water was parted to one side and to the other, and Elisha went over. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The second lesson is from the fifth chapter of Galatians. For freedom Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. For you were called to freedom, brothers and sisters. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for self-indulgence, but through love become slaves to one another. For the whole law is summed up in a single commandment, 
you shall love your neighbor as yourself. If, however, you bite and devour one another, take care that you are not consumed by one another. Live by the Spirit, I say, and do not gratify the desires of the flesh. For what the flesh desires is opposed to the Spirit, and what the Spirit desires is opposed to the flesh. For these are opposed to each other to prevent you from doing what you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not subject to the law. Now the works of the flesh are obvious. Fornication, impurity, licentiousness, idolatry, sorcery, enmities, strife, jealousy, anger, quarrels, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and things like these. I am warning you as I warned before. Those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. By contrast, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against such things, and those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also be guided by the Spirit. Here in Sweden. According to Luke, the ninth chapter, glory, glory to you, o Lord. When the days drew near for Jesus to be taken up, he set his face to go to Jerusalem, and he sent messengers ahead of him. On their way, they entered a village of the Samaritans to make ready for him. But they did not receive him, because his face was set toward Jerusalem. When his disciples James and John saw it, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them? But he turned and rebuked them. Then they went on to another village. As they were going along the road, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. To another he said, follow me. But he said, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. But Jesus said to him, let the dead bury their own dead. But as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Another said, I will follow you, Lord, but let me first say farewell to those at my home. Jesus said to him, no one who puts a hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord. Christ. And please be seated. I want to focus first on that Galatians lesson uh, this morning, Paul's letter to the Galatians, where Paul says, if we live by the Spirit, let us also be guided by the Spirit. To live by the Spirit is to call upon the presence of the Holy that resides deep within our soul so that when we are faced with hostile situations, we do not react with the desires of the flesh, the things we hear about this morning, enmity, strife, jealousy, anger, quarrels, dissensions, just to name a few, but instead, we respond with the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Friends, grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus the Christ, 
Amen. It's that self-control that I want to focus on this morning, at least at the beginning, because there was an incident a few months ago where I lost self-control. The McCaffrey's parking lot. <laughs> I have my space, my parking space. And it's the first row after the entrance. And if you ever go into McCaffrey's, you know it's a very busy place at times. And you have to watch for shoppers going in and out. You have to watch for the cars. And sometimes you have to wait in the right of way if somebody is pulling out of one of those spaces in the first row. And that's what was happening this particular time. And the person back of me started hammering the, the car horn. I mean, just... Argh. And then this person started to at least attempt to go around me, and there's, there's no room to go around. And that's full transparency, folks, when this pastor lost control and responded with a work of the flesh. <laughs> An unkind gesture with, with some unkind words. Thankfully, I didn't have my clerical collar on. I've heard stories, folks, of pastors who lost control, full clerical garb. And thankfully, I looked to make sure it was none of you. Of course, Prince of Peace people would never drive that aggressively, I know. But I have to say, I mean, it, it, it ended without incident, and I went on my way. But I was bothered by this situation. I was bothered by how my default emotion was this desire of the flesh. I understand how road rage occurs when we do not call on our better angels. James and John this morning have a bit of road rage. Did you pick that up in the gospel today? Jesus, it's chapter 9 in Luke's gospel, Jesus sets his face to Jerusalem, which means now he is really beginning this journey to the cross. And the journey takes Jesus from Galilee to Judea, which means that Jesus has to go right smack through the middle of Samaria on this journey. And you probably know that the Jews and the Samaritans didn't get along. And so it's not surprising, as Jesus sends messengers ahead of him, that when they come to this village of Samaria, these messengers are not received well. And James and John respond with this work of the flesh. When his disciples James and John saw it, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them? A bit of an overreaction, wouldn't you say? But not without precedence. We've been hearing about Elijah today, Elijah and Elisha. If you back up a few chapters, there is a story in 2 Kings where Elijah comes into confrontation with the Samaritans. It's a captain of the king of Samaria and his squad of 50. And there's, there's conflict because the Samaritans are worshiping foreign gods. And Elijah's response, what's Elijah's response? Consume them with fire. Here's, here's what happens. If a man, this is Elijah speaking, if I am a man of God, let fire come down from heaven and consume you and your fifty. Then fire came down from heaven and consumed him and his fifty. And if that wasn't bad enough, it happens just a couple of verses later. It happens a second time where this fire of heaven consumes the Samaritans. Well, thankfully... Jesus has a more measured response to the Samaritans today. And what may be surprising is that just a few verses before, 
Remember how Jesus was sending the disciples out two by two? And he gave the people, he gave the disciples instructions on what to do if a community or if a person does not receive you. It's very simple. You know, what are you supposed to do? Shake the dust off, Shake the dust off your feet and move on. It diffuses tense situations. And so Jesus rebukes James and John this morning, and they go on their way. And remember, the way is the way to the cross where Jesus will destroy these desires of the flesh so that the fruit of the Spirit may flourish in the people of God. I wonder if Paul is more helpful this morning than Jesus when we speak about these situations that we sometimes find ourselves in. Jesus says, just shake off the dust and move on. But Paul this morning goes deeper. He goes to that reserve of the Holy that is found deep within ourselves that will equip us to show up in this world as the people of God. It's so amazing to me that our default emotion when we come into these tense situations so often are these desires of the flesh. We respond with anger and quarrels and enmity and strife. It's how Elijah showed up to the Samaritans. It's how James and John showed up to the Samaritans. And it's how Pastor Peter showed up in the McCaffrey's parking lot. And folks, these are the men of God. And if this is how the men of God react... What hope is there for the world? That is why Paul writes to the Galatians. And Paul three times tells the church, the church in Galatia, but also the church today, to live by the Spirit, to be guided by the Spirit, because those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires, so that we can live by the Spirit and be guided by the Spirit. And what does that mean? It means that we live by the fruit of the Spirit. Interesting that Paul has fruit as singular in this text, and not plural. I think often it is easy to take these fruit of the Spirit, and just deal with one individual fruit, self-control, or patience, or kindness. But the fact that Paul just says fruit means that we have to take the whole package. This is how the people of God show up. We don't just dust our feet off and move on, but we go deeper. We go deeper so that in those tense situations in parking lots or on the road, and I'm sure you've all experienced that, or in those experiences when you deal with your Samaritans, the people that just kind of rub you the wrong way, Paul is saying respond with the whole package of this fruit. To me it's easier to take this list that we have in Galatians and move backwards. Start with self-control. Because if we get self-control under control, that leads to gentleness, because you'll be gentle if you have self-control. And back that up, it will lead to faithfulness, which will call us to generosity, which leads to kindness. And if there's kindness, then that leads to patience. And before you know it, here we are, folks. We're showing up in the world Peace, love, and joy. How would the world be different if the 
people of God responded with the fruit of the Spirit rather than the knee-jerk reaction of responding with the desires of the flesh. My neighbor has a, uh, a bumper sticker on her car that says, just be nice. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe we need to be reminded of that on the road. But I think we need to go a little bit further in to who we are as God's people. We bear the whole package of the fruit of the Spirit. We live by the Spirit, and so we are guided by the Spirit. So that when we face these situations, these hostile situations, we do not default to the strong emotions of the desire of the flesh, but rather we can show up in the world with a non-anxious presence of peace, of joy, of love. And guess what? This is how Jesus saves the world. Amen. As we show up in the world as people of God, we confess our faith through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. United in Christ and guided by the Spirit, we pray for the Church the creation, and all in me. God, you call us to go where Christ leads. Turn us from the ways of the world and the desires of the flesh. Guide us to fullness of joy in the spirit, where bodies and souls rest secure. Grant us strength to follow the way of the cross, that we may show up in the world led by the fruit of the spirit. God of Hear our prayer. For all who feel impelled to violence, that the Spirit of God will calm their anger, 
and help them recognize each person as a child of God, God of grace. Hear our prayer. For an increase in civility in public discourse, that all who are championing causes may respect those who hold different ideas. We pray especially for our nation in the light of two Supreme Court rulings on abortion rights and gun control. God of grace. Hear our prayer. God of love, attend to those struggling with the desires of the flesh, addiction, depression, or uncontrolled anger. Provide support systems and loving companions as they work toward health, that they may rest in hope and know the fullness of joy in your presence. God of grace. Hear our prayer. We rejoice this day with Emily Contini as she received her first communion. God of grace, hear our prayer. Thank you for the gift of new life at Prince of Peace as we welcome this day Lena, Claudia, and Carol. God of grace, hear our prayer. We rejoice this day over the marriage this weekend of Kevin Nowak and Amanda Stone. God of grace, hear our prayer. God of kindness, reveal your healing presence to all who are sick and dying. Uphold those who grieve. Support the needs of any who are unemployed, hungry, or have nowhere to lay their heads. We name this day Joan and Len, Eleanor, all on our prayer list, and those we name before you now. God of grace, hear our prayer. God of joy, we give thanks for all who have died and now celebrate the inheritance of life in you. Keep their examples of faithfulness always before us, that we trust your promises in life and in death. We name the saints of our lives. God of grace, hear, hear our prayer. God of every time and place, in Jesus' name and filled with your Holy Spirit, we entrust these spoken prayers and those in our hearts into your holy keeping. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and also with you. you. We share God's peace with one another this day. Him, peace be with you.
God of abundance, you have set before us a plentiful harvest. As we feast on your goodness, strengthen us to labor in your field and equip us to bear fruit for the good of all. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. God triune, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Over the eons, your merciful might evolved our home, a fragile tree of life. Here by your wisdom are both life and death, growth and decay, the nest and the hunt, sunshine and storm, darkness and light. Sustained by these wonders, we creatures of dust join in the ancient song. The earth is full of your glory. The earth is full of your glory. O oh God, triune, you took on our flesh in Jesus, our healer. In Christ, you bring life from death. We remember his cross. We laud his resurrection. Broken like bread, he enlivens our body. Outpoured like wine, he fills the earth with goodness. Receiving this mystery, we mortals sing our song. The earth is full of your glory. The earth is full of your glory. We praise you for the heart of Jesus, so filled with your love for this earth. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered around this table, we, your children, unite in this song. The earth is full of your glory. The earth is full of your glory. O God triune, you create the worlds, you uphold the living, you embrace the dead, send forth your spirit, and renew the face of the earth. Strengthen us for our journey with this meal, the body and blood of Christ. Give us a future that trusts in you and cares for your earth. Empowered by your promises, we rise from our depths to praise you again. The earth is full of your glory. The earth, the earth is, is full, full of, of your glory. glory. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught. Our Father in heaven, how would be your name? Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Amen. As we celebrate First Communion, I would ask that Emily and her family come to the table first, and then we can come as the congregation on a normal Sunday. Also, you just saw Victoria left. It doesn't mean she didn't like my sermon. It means that uh, Victoria has to get to another church 
and she just had that, 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 that conflict at the end of the service. So we're going to do this a cappella, and uh, maybe Joan and I can lead it with, get us started on the O Lamb of God, and then some of you singers, uh, you can carry us through. O Lamb of God, you bear the sin. blood of Christ is shed.
We pray. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Life-giving God, through this meal you have bandaged our wounds and fed us with your mercy. Now send us forth to live for others, both friend and stranger, that all may come to know your love. This we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Congregation may please be seated. And I would like to invite Carol and Claudia and Lena to, to come forward to the altar this morning. We have this uh, privilege and honor of welcoming new members to Prince of Peace. And we have uh, three faithful women here with us uh, today. And we're waiting for Lena to, to come forward. Just come, come up uh, to the altar area here. I want to inter no, no, just turn around. This will be the only time I embarrass you here. <laughs> uh, Carol uh, Baldessari is, uh, is coming to us uh, today. And Claudia Thompson and uh, Lena Angel Gidi. Uh, and Lena, if you make the connection, that's why David is taking the picture. Uh, <laughs> it's David's uh, uh, wife. And she has just arrived from India. Um, just a few months ago. So it's, it's great to have you here. And now you can turn it and face me. And I would like to share this prayer of welcome to you today. God of hospitality, we praise you for the opportunity to welcome new members among us today. We thank you for their life stories and their faith journeys, their diversity of gifts, May we who have been here a while be zealous in our willingness to listen and to learn. Make us open to revised visions and new perspectives, we pray. Help us to provide a nurturing environment for these new friends as we invite them into our church and into our lives. Enable us to take time for one another as we establish a shared faith and a common history. Bless us all, O oh God, as we worship together and seek to be your servants in a needy world. Amen. I want to officially welcome you to Prince of Peace. And Carol, you have something to give to Prince of Peace on this day, and I have a few gifts for you on, uh, on this day. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, Carol. And this, that is beautiful. And this is going on our cross wall. If you don't know, we have a cross wall right in the lounge, right here, right off, off the sanctuary. And Carol asked, could I bring this? And I said, absolutely. So thank you for this gift. And I want to give the three of you uh, a little uh, gift here today as a welcome. And, you know, normally we... Uh, would give a certificate. And, well, we didn't, we, we're not going to give a certificate. We're going give, to give you something that you may eat and enjoy. <laughs> so, Claudia, there is a gift for you. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. Well, that's one thing. Look at me. You know, Lutherans. Uh, uh, yes, and Carol, welcome to Prince of Peace. And Lena Angel, welcome to Prince of Peace. Okay, let's give them a nice round of applause. And you can go back to your seats. And now, Emily, I want you to come up on your first communion Sunday. Emily was very faithful in coming to class and very smart, I'll have you know. She, she knew all the answers. And it's not a test, right? It's just a gift. You remember that. And so here's a little gift that we come. It comes from the church, Emily, on your, on your first communion. So I think we can, we can get a round of applause for Emily. Uh, have any uh, announcements? Are there announcements in the congregation? I don't want to. It's July, or it's almost July. Uh, oh, Dito, what? what? Did the church today fire? Did 
dinner church at five. Yes, you can still come if you would like uh, to, to, to join us. I know many of you have signed up, but you're still welcome to come at five o'clock. That's, that's word and sacrament ministry service. Uh, so, uh, yeah, five o'clock this afternoon. Right. There are announcements, and that, so you can hear what the council met this past Tuesday night. And I don't know if the minutes are ready yet uh, from that. No, I, I didn't want to put Dave on the spot. Uh, so with that, let us rise for the benediction. The God of peace, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you, comfort you, and show you the path of life this day and always. Amen. Okay, now we gotta. All of a sudden, I'm waiting for Victoria to start playing. Uh, praise God from whom all blessings flow. I think we know this. Uh, so, uh, I'll I'll try to get us. Praise God from whom. Peace now and love your neighbor. Thanks be to God.